Okay, so from diagnosis and clinical presentation, we're going to come on to treatment, but just a, a brief word about diagnostic tests in acanth amoeba. They're not always positive. Uh, so confocal microscopy in good hands, about 80% specificity and sensitivity these days, approximately. So that's been a big help to us. Uh, but we still biopsy the epithelium and, uh, and PCR is also useful. But you sometimes just have to rely on clinical suspicion, looking for classic signs like perineural infiltrates, like limbitis, and like uh, a late stage disease here, a ring abscess. If you got this far, you're already in a bad prognostic group. So if in doubt, treat for acanth amoeba. And, uh, and here is the story of what we are currently doing in Morpheus, and we will finish by saying what we are hoping to move to. So the first phase is intensive treatment. And what I would say is do an epithelial biopsy, even if you have a positive confocal diagnosis. The reason for that is it helps the drugs to penetrate the cornea. And what we are trying to do in the first phase of intensive treatment uh, is to sterilize the organisms and avoid the disease stage here uh, where we've got these poor prognostic indicators like older age, nothing you can do about that, ring abscesses, or scleritis. All these things put you in a worse prognostic group. So if you can get to the infection, before the advanced stage, then you're doing something really good. So firstly, intensive treatment. How do we do this in the UK? Well, we remove the epithelium. It helps the drugs to penetrate. I'm still, uh, myself, uh, motivated to admit patients for 48 hours. I think that here, uh, while the organisms are still in the free planktonic phase, that is when they are most sensitive to the drugs and the more drugs you can expose them to and the more organisms you can kill, the better in the early phase. So we use dual therapy at the moment with, in the UK it's PHMP. Here in Spain it would be chlorhexidine. They are equivalent. There's no proven benefit to using one or the other. And uh, we also combine in the UK with hexamidine. I gather you can get broline in Spain but you need uh, to have a special order for that. And so we use these drops alternate half hourly, remove the epithelium, and, uh, and we use lots of pain relief because these patients are in a lot of pain. Neomycin, um, foraconazole, there's some sensitivity in the planktonic phase, the trophozoites to that, but once the organisms are insisted, uh, they are not sensitive, and so there's no real role for neomycin in the primary treatment of acanth amoeba. It just is a, you know, adds to toxicity, really. Steroids, we don't use them in the first two weeks. So what we are trying to do is kill as many of the organisms when they're in the free trophozoite phase here and before they put on their body armor here. We don't know how fast this transition occurs. There are various studies, but it's, it's probably mostly done within the first few days. And so we have our intensive phase that lasts for at least a week, possibly two, but then we are moving on to a less intensive phase after that. Francisco has already reminded us about co-infection. Uh, about 10 to 20% of cases have another organism, so watch for that and investigate for it too if there are unusual features. This is the case I showed you earlier on of combined pseudomonas and acanth amoeba infection with these atypical uh, perineural infiltrates here. Incidentally, perineural infiltrates can occur in just pseudomonas infection, but it is virtually pathognomonic for acanth amoeba. So after you have had the intensive phase in uh, a typical case, uh, then the eye will be starting to improve by two weeks. And at that stage, you are in the chronic phase of treatment. You are trying to kill the remaining encysted organisms. And nothing happens fast in acanth amoeba. It's important for your patients to know that. So here we are thinking now about reducing treatment toxicity. So in the UK, we stop the propamidine or the hexamidine uh, after two weeks. And at that stage, if there's limbitis or the eye is inflamed, uh, there's no problem with adding topical steroids. And there's a long debate in acanth amoeba about whether steroids are good or bad. 
for the end outcome. It appears that treatment with steroids before diagnosis is a bad prognostic indicator, but after the intensive treatment phase, it appears to be safe to use them to control symptoms. What about uh, more severe inflammation, scleritis? How do we handle that? Well, there's no good evidence, or at least it would be unusual to have organisms invading the sclera, so we treat the inflammation here uh, with systemic immunosuppression, and this is the uh, step ladder for uh, increasing invasiveness of treatment that John Dart has uh, published. And uh, we start with uh, topical steroids and oral non-steroids. We do that if there's limbitis, but if somebody has scleritis, we add in oral prednisolone, and then we go on to either cyclosporin or azathioprine and Celsept. And we use oral antifungals at that, this stage, voriconazole, not to kill the insisted organisms because they're not sensitive to it, but to try and get to any, uh, any trophozoites that are in the planktonic phase. At the end of treatment, and this can vary in time, about two-thirds of people are off treatment by one year. How do you decide when to stop treatment? Well, we look for a quiet eye, and once the eye is not inflamed, and it's not inflamed after you have stopped the steroids, we usually continue with the biguanides, the chlorhexidine here in Spain, for one more month, and then we stop for one month, and then we review the patient. And if the patient is quiet at that point, it's very unlikely that you will get a recurrence subsequently. Visual rehabilitation, exactly the same as after other forms of infection, post-infective scarring, we're looking at contact lenses. Uh, if a patient's going back to contact lenses, you need to give them the right safety advice. Don't swim in them, don't shower in them, don't sleep in them. Trans-PRK for a superficial scar, and keratoplasty if it's a deeper scar. And if there's a poor response to treatment, you've got to be thinking about co-infection. You've got to be thinking about controlling inflammation, scleritis. Switching therapy to fortified treatment. We have tried this, and it can be useful. And the question then arose, well, why don't we use fortified treatment right at the beginning? Why don't we use a stronger percentage of either chlorhexidine or PHMB from the beginning? And this is what we are exploring now as primary treatment, monotherapy with fortified biguanides. And the role for cross-linking, it doesn't look like it is working at the moment. Uh, surgery, early surgery in acanthamoeba, again, we don't do it, but uh, some centers are using this. And cryotherapy, if nothing else works. And so the ODAC trial, uh, the... Um, the trial of fortified treatment that we are exploring now as monotherapy. That's 0.08% PHMB. You can get 0.2% chlorhexidine uh, made up, but 0.08% is what we are trying against our standard therapy, and uh, John Dart and his team will be able to tell you the answer as to which is most effective in the sterilization phase for acanthamoeba, I hope, in about two years' time. So with that... We'll leave it there. Thank you very much.